In this week's Ancient History News, I've got six fantastic stories for you. I talk about the study published in the journal Scientific Reports of what appears to be a Bronze Age red lipstick from ancient Iran. Remarkable discoveries from around the world include a Bronze Age settlement in Switzerland, where a Roman brick workshop was expected, the oldest piece of bread ever found, and a monumental Etruscan tomb. I also look at a DNA study which shows how inbreeding was avoided in prehistoric France, and discuss how researchers have solved a mystery about the treasure of Elena in Spain. Research on a Bronze Age vial reveals an early example of red lipstick. A Bronze Age chlorite vial housed in the Giroft Archaeological Museum in Iran may contain a very early example of red lipstick. The cylindrical container is made from greenish chlorite schist and surfaced from a Bronze Age cemetery in 2001 after the Halil River flooded the surrounding area. A fine dark purple powder was extracted from the vial and analysed using several different methods. It was also radiocarbon dated. The cemetery belonged to the culture known as the Giroft or Halil Rudd civilization. This is probably the same ancient society referred to as the Mahasi in Mesopotamian texts. The researchers found that the powder contained hematite, quartz, brownite, manganite, brockantite, anglosite, clinochlorate, wedelite and rare crystals called galena. Traces of fractured vegetal fibres were also found and may have been the sources of aromatic components. The hematite caused the red colour since hematite turns from black to red upon being ground. It's likely that the quartz was either used as a temper for the paste or to create a glittery effect. Something similar has been seen in other Bronze Age cosmetics. Overall, more than 80% of the substance would have contributed to the deep red colour. Wedelite, which is calcium oxalate, may have been a byproduct of using urea to change the colours of the copper compounds. It's also been found in other Bronze Age cosmetics from ancient Iran, and this was thought to be the case in these other examples. The deep red colour and the waxy substances contained in the vial are similar to the recipes that make up modern day lipsticks. Interestingly, the substance didn't contain many lead minerals, even though ancient foundations, eyeshadows and blushes did. It's possible the ancient manufacturers of the lipstick were aware of the dangers of lead poisoning, which would have been facilitated by its presence in makeup meant for the lips rather than the skin. Radiocarbon testing gave a 14th century BCE date, with a 95% probability of the date range 1936 to 1687 BCE. The authors conclude that the vial and its contents are compatible with a lipstick and its container. Given the slim shape of the vial, it would have been easy for a person to hold it along with a mirror in one hand and use the other hand to apply its contents. Such an image appears in the Turin Papyrus from Deir el Medina in Egypt and dates to the 12th century BCE. It's one of the earliest examples of lipstick found so far. Although the vial is known to have surfaced from a cemetery during a flood, it was looted before eventually being recovered, so its original context is not known exactly. For example, it's not known who it belonged to or which other artefacts were alongside it in the burial. Bronze Age Settlement Discovered in Switzerland in the autumn of 2023, archaeologists carried out an excavation next to the Shawgasli Road in Heimberg, Switzerland, prior to a construction project that was due to take place. Previous work had led them to predict that a Roman period brick workshop would be found there. However, much to their surprise, they found the remains of a previously unknown Bronze Age settlement. The discovery of the site was announced in a press release by the Archaeological Service of the Canton of Bern. Excavations took place over three months and uncovered ditches and a large amount of pottery. Experts were able to date the sites between 1500 and 1200 BC based on the typology of the pottery, which is interesting because no other Middle Bronze Age settlements have been found in this area. Archaeologists also found several pits which were filled with heat-damaged stones. It's not clear what these pits or stones were used for. Archaeologist Regina Stapfer, who was involved with the dig, has suggested the pits and stones may have been a form of heating. Other pits were also found there, and these appear to have been for clay extraction 
extraction, a practical material that was used for pottery as well as for the plaster in domestic dwellings. Only a part of the settlement has been excavated so far, so its original size hasn't been determined. Since no burial ground has been found in conjunction with it, it's not clear who lived there exactly. World's oldest bread discovered in Turkey. Archaeologists working at the Neolithic settlement of Katulhoyuk in Turkey have found an 8,600 year old piece of bread in what appears to be an ancient oven. The area of the site where the bread was discovered is labelled as Space 66 and comprises adobe houses accessed from their roofs. Katulhoyuk is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and has yielded numerous structures and artefacts over the years, including wall paintings and sculptures. The leavened bread was identified by the Science and Technology Research Application Centre at Nekmitin Erbakan University, who carried out analyses on the residue which has a spongy consistency. Radiocarbon tests gave a date of around 6600 BCE, which would make it the oldest bread found in the world so far. Prior to this, the oldest bread was that found in Egypt. The bread hadn't been baked, but had fermented, preserving the starches. Although the discovery was made in 2021, it's only recently that analyses confirmed this food residue was an uncooked piece of bread dating to 8,600 years ago. Monumental Etruscan tomb discovered in the necropolis of San Giuliano. The necropolis of San Giuliano is an Etruscan cemetery dating to between the 7th and the 3rd centuries BCE. It comprises more than 500 tombs carved into the slope of a hill in the Marturinum Regional Park around 70 kilometres north of Rome. Recently, whilst cleaning around the Queen's tomb, a huge semi-buried structure was discovered, measuring 40 metres in width and 10 metres in height. Once the vegetation was removed, a monumental tomb with three funerary chambers and three Doric-style doors emerged. Based on its architecture, it probably dates to between the 5th and 4th centuries BCE, so a little bit later than the Queen's tomb. It contributes further knowledge on how the Etruscans planned their cemeteries and how they created such elaborate monuments in difficult areas, such as on cliffs and on the slopes of hills. Once conservation work has been carried out, the tomb will be open to the public. The necropolis is managed by local authorities and also includes a museum where artefacts excavated from the tombs are on display. New DNA study gives insights into social dynamics in prehistoric France. From the early Holocene, a genetically distinct group of hunter-gatherers inhabited Western and Central Europe. Experts refer to this group as Western hunter-gatherers or WHGs. This group replaced the Upper Paleolithic Magdalenian culture everywhere in Western Europe except on the Iberian Peninsula and in parts of southwestern France. When the Neolithic farmers arrived from the east, these hunter-gatherers were more or less completely assimilated into the new culture. Exactly when and how this happened is much debated, but by around 6,750 years ago, the Mesolithic lifestyle had ended. In Brittany, on the Atlantic façade, the Mesolithic sites of Hoedic and Teviec are incredibly important for understanding the transition to the Neolithic, because they comprise a large amount of very well-preserved human burials. In this new study published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, the researchers sequenced the genomes of 10 late Mesolithic individuals from these two sites and Champigny in the northeast of France. They then combined this data with previously published work on diet and carried out a new high-resolution chronological analysis. Diet is an interesting factor because at other European sites, such as the Grotta del Uzzo in Sicily, it's been determined that hunter-gatherers and farmers did interact. However, this doesn't necessarily mean they mated. The researchers found that the individuals buried at Horodic and Teviec had a mostly marine diet, as might be expected from their coastal locations, and were genetically similar to other WHGs previously analysed in other studies. Although farming groups did live in the region at the same time that these western hunter-gatherers inhabited the Brittany coastline, there's no evidence for genetic mixing. The researchers were also able to determine that the genetic relatedness within each site was low, which suggests that these groups had social systems in place to stop inbreeding. It's likely that these Mesolithic people had networks with other groups in the region, enabling the exchange of mates, which is technically called an exogamic practice. Researchers find that Iberian Bronze Age artefacts were made from meteorotic iron.
Around 60 years ago, archaeologists discovered a cache of 66 Bronze Age artifacts in Alicante, Spain. These artifacts became known collectively as the Treasure of Vilena. Most of the objects are made of gold and are some of the most important examples of goldsmithing from that time period to ever be found in Europe. The gold artifacts have been dated to between 1500 and 1200 BCE. However, two other objects were, until now, somewhat of a mystery. A 4.5 centimetre wide hemisphere that was probably part of a scepter or sword hilt and an 8.5 centimetre wide torque style bracelet have a ferrous appearance, which means they look as if they are partially made of iron. However, this is strange because the Iron Age on the Iberian Peninsula didn't start until 850 BCE, so several hundred years later than when the other gold objects within the cache were created. Iron ore comes from two places, the Earth's crust and meteorites, since other Bronze Age objects, such as Tutankhamun's dagger, were made of meteorotic iron, experts thought it possible that the hemisphere and the torque were also made of this. Since iron ore from meteorites contains a lot more nickel than that from Earth's crust, researchers analysed the nickel levels of the two artefacts from the treasure of Vilena. They found that they were indeed made from meteorotic iron, which solves the mystery of their ferrous appearance and antiquity. These two artefacts are the only ancient pieces made of meteorotic iron to be found on the Iberian Peninsula. The hemisphere and torque are badly corroded, so the analysis was not conclusive. Further non-invasive tests would need to be carried out to confirm the data. That's it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Thank you to my patrons and channel members, and I'll see you next time.